you see what happened when you pull a bio online from 2016. <laughs> but then it was smaller than that. <laughs> but I operate in new roles. And what I have the privilege of doing is working for the state. Getting to think about gender equality for everyone, everywhere. Already, people in this room have some sense of justice. An idea about improving quality of life for another group than yourself. I would like to believe that. That is empathy. I think that is power. And being kind creates value in society. Justice has the best dividend, peace. That you can walk around with peace of mind and public peace. Because a society without peace is a society where people have to call their male cousin to go and buy a bread in the park. As if he had a bulletproof vest. As if he was free bandit too. A society without peace is that you pay more to fat because you think you have that my kind of crowd. And my kind of crowd is not just the people whom I went primary school with and so on. It's a way that we can have entertainment like burglar proof in our house. People get braces, burglar proof for their teeth, they straighten things out. People just get burglar proof on their house. All trying to engineer a sense of private safety because we lack it in public space. That led. So this issue of violence against women and girls is a fundamental development priority. And that is the context in which I'll be presenting information here to you. That the studies that Dr. Gabriel Hosea has done and other academics throughout the Caribbean have shown that one in three women experience a form of violence in their lifetime globally. But in Trinidad and Tobago, we have it at 44%. That means we are above the global average. In countries like Guyana, we have it above 50%. Is it acceptable for us to live in Caribbean societies where almost every second woman is a victim of violence, is a survivor of violence? It connects the very stories you read on newspapers, the headlines, the shoo shoo. The silences that some of you all have in this class right now about your experiences to the extreme forms of violence which lead to death. I'm going to tell you something scary about the reporting as well. So, yes, I work for the state, but I'm also a citizen. When we have low domestic violence reports, we call this society peaceful, but then we have underreporting. And when the numbers go up, we say, well, we do not have a job because we put in a mechanism for reporting. The goal is to reduce silence by increasing reporting. Because women and girls need to have confidence and trust in the system to go ahead and say, this case is worthwhile. Justice will be pursued. And I will receive justice in my lifetime. But the state's job is to reduce the number of cases of violence. Is that clear? So we see the relationship between the infrastructure to enhance reporting and the trust and confidence we need in a system. But we also need to create a politic in the society by citizens, by public workers, by the private sector, by activists to ensure that we reduce the number of cases. And that is why it's a call of government, a call of society thing. But this is a young people issue. So when I have to go around and have until ministry by ministry to tell them, youth, child, gender, nexus of development. Everybody watching me. He young, right? 34 and a half. So, I'm inside the policy still. And when I say the youth, child, gender, nexus of development is that if you want to imagine trade and innovation, you need to invest in young people to be innovative since they are children. You need to improve their capital base by 16 so that rich people are the only ones who can become manufacturers and they give me skills on entrepreneurship, corn soup and so on for people like me. That is why the youth child gender of nexus of development matters. If you're looking at reducing the number of crimes in society, you have to reduce the number of perpetrators in society. That means you need to model social behaviors and practices from primary school and intervene in school violence that we see so much 
on social media and Facebook and have a moral outreach and a weaker policy and programmatic intervention in the youth child gender nexus of development. But if we look at the health outcomes for women and perimenopause is a secret and something you have to talk about and we don't have a public discourse on menstrual health and hygiene, then we are missing young people who are going through a very ordinary period in their life but all this taboo all of this social malaise for something that can happen to anyone. Then, the youth child gender nexus of development is crumbling. And we are dealing with the outcomes when chickens come home to roost when they become adolescents and adults. And that is a problem. So the big question for you here, there's no legal question I could ask you. I'm speaking to you all as incentions, petitions, Tobagonians, Jamaicans, how shall I live? It's one question. And somehow when I've asked myself how shall I live, I have a bigger sense of responsibility to others. I ask myself what kind of community I live in, what is the way that men, women, boys and girls in all the diversity relate to each other. The way that you could be in a classroom, the way we think about parity in parliament, the way we understand the roles we can have in the economy. How shall I live? How shall I live is a very big question that we'll be exploring throughout our lives. And in that how shall I live, it brings us to a very concrete issue of social class. This is where I'm going to start to wrap up. It's not just saying that we have the autonomy and the resources to be free, women and men, or boys and girls. Because some people don't have the status or the standing to be treated with that same level of respect. Some people buy their freedom in this society. Gender-based violence is not a theoretical concept. It is something lived on the body. You have gender-based violence almost as like we imagine somebody jumping on bushes but this is also an uncle, your mother, boyfriend. It happened in a bar. It happened in Nagar. It happened when you're going to a festival. It happened in carnival. It happened on your way to school or going after it. What about sexual violence that happens in Maxis? Or we just blame that driver and not think about the precarity and insecurity that so many girls experience on their way to school. That is an infringement on their rights to education. If 92% of the reports of those who experience sexual violence in Trinidad and Tobago for the last four years are from young women and girls under the age of 35, this is a young woman and girls issue in development. As lawyers, what is your duty now? That is the type of work we want to do. So I want to drive you more, not just to think about justice as sports or justice as infrastructure with laws, but development justice, which is all our responsibilities as citizens in this space, and understanding the youth child gender nexus of development, that this is not just development happening for older people who are conscious and pay taxes, but the investment we need to make, the theme for this year, for six years of activism, is investing in prevention of violence against women and girls. So I need to see how your money matches to your values. And we are trying something. We will be launching, it was agreed by cabinet, the National Strategic Action Plan on ending gender-based violence and sexual violence. Gender and Child Affairs in the Office of the Prime Minister is tasked with leading the National Strategic Action Plan on ending gender-based violence and sexual violence from 2023 to 2027 which marks the highest public investment on combating GDP and S in our country. It is not perfect, as some speakers alluded to before, but it is a bold effort. And I know government alone cannot lead it. The Office of the Prime Minister alone cannot own this. And when it is made public, I will happily return here and engage you as student leaders and people who will be crafting the decisions throughout the Caribbean, not just our laws, but as people 
with status, economic resources, and a voice, and a platform for that voice to ensure that we can end gender-based violence and sexual violence and understand the huge child gender nexus of development to have a more peaceful Caribbean society. Thank you.